In this talk, Paulius shares some personal advice to leaders and agile coaches helping organizations through change. Don't blindly change and install the next agile framework that will solve all your problems. Instead, start with the simple things. Read the environment, practice patience, find the body, understand your level, and reflect and recharge. Paulius Tusikas is a brilliant Agile coach who has been traveling the world the last five years working with various companies and doing his best to have fun along the way. He is a consultant of Nomad 8, being the only member located in Europe. If you want to see more brilliant talks on anything Agile, make sure to subscribe and to check out the earlier videos here on the channel. Paulius, take it away. So in 2016, I had the near death experience. I remember that day like it was yesterday. It happened at a beautiful place called Costa de Caparica, Portugal. I was a beginner surfer having only two lessons in my whole life. I showed up at the beach excited with my wetsuit on and my surfboard nicely waxed. I had no clue that the waves that day were way beyond my capabilities. And I had to learn it the hard way. So here's how I got into trouble. I was already in the water when I saw a beautiful wave coming. I turned around, made a couple of power paddles. And then the problem was that the wave was way too big and I got my timing wrong. The wave crashed on me. I felt off my board. I got into a natural washing machine. The wave power was turning my body round and round while making me lose the sense of orientation. I spent seven seconds under the water. And as I finally got to inhale some air, another wave landed on my face. Seven more seconds. And then seven more. I got lucky because the third wave pushed me close enough to the shore so I can stand on my feet and have my head above the water. I managed to get out of the water and then spend half an hour just sitting on the sand, catching my breath and reflecting on my experience. Luckily, these days, we rarely risk lives of people when continuously evolving our organizations or looking for options to improve ways of working. Today, I'll share some lessons learned during different stages of my surfing journey, which are relevant regardless if it's personal or organizational context. So here's me, holding a surfboard and wearing a wetsuit. Through the eyes of my friends, I look like a real surfer after posting these pictures on Instagram. But guess what? At that point of time, the number of waves I caught was an absolute zero. My so-called look good mindset was completely wrong. Today, looking good is easy. People can do a two-day course and call themselves some sort of a master afterwards, or organizations can shout from the rooftops how agile they are while still living and breathing the principles of traditional command and control management. I sometimes see organizations blindly chasing the latest frameworks, looking for the next model to fix all their deep problems and organizational flaws. And that's a similar approach I started my journey. I was looking for the prettiest board and the wetsuit of a famous brand, but none of that was helping me to achieve the real progress. So what's my advice here? Start with being honest with yourself. Understand the game you're playing and get the right foundations. Beginner surfers need the biggest board they can get so they can have more balance, more stability, and could easily catch waves. The same applies to organizations. Start with simple things. Make your teams better, improve collaboration, help them shine. And once you hit the limitations of that, go for a bigger change, something more advanced to enable organizational wide agility. Trust me, it's really hard to build great things on loose foundations. Lesson number two I had, one of the first things I underestimated when starting my surfing journey was the ability to read the environment and surfing conditions. A smart thing to do when you go surfing is check in the weather report, wave size, the strength, direction of wind, and so on. This is the preparation part even before you start packing and hitting the road. Failed preparation can lead you to disappointment when you come to the beach and the ocean is flat or the wind is so strong that the waves are just unsurfing. Ability to read the context of your team or organization is critical. How does your environment look like? How open and engaged people are? Or what are the behavioral patterns that emerge in a particular environment? 
these are just a few questions you need to answer before you turn your doing mode on. Whenever I start working with an organization, team, or considering running an initiative, I start with a simple 3P model to learn more about the environment. 3P stands for people, patterns, and the past. I personally love putting my curiosity hat on and learning as much as I can about the new environment or a challenge. So let's start with the first element, the past. We live life in the present, but we can only learn by looking backwards. And one of the biggest traps that new leaders or managers fall into is missing a chance to genuinely learn from the past. They sometimes land in a new environment and suddenly aiming to turn things upside down or try fixing everything around them. The truth is that every environment is shaped by events and experiences that happened over, over time. The past can be a great teacher and provide insights that will help making smarter moves in the future. The second element is patterns. Any environment is impacted by multiple people, norms, beliefs, and other forces around. Understanding different patterns early can help you to increase the chances of success and be more deliberate about particular tactics and strategies you use. Here's an example. Some time ago, I was working with a hyper growth company. I learned that there are high chances that every two to three weeks, a new team member will join or someone from the team will move to another area within the organization. Whether I liked it or not, that was a clear pattern I had to adapt to. I felt that one of the main things I can do as an Agile coach is to co-create a gold standard for onboarding and offboarding people in our area. Additionally, I wanted to make sure that we continuously keep an eye on key skills and competencies and aim for sufficient distribution of knowledge. I didn't care much about how we ran standups or how our burned out chart looked like. I left that to the smart engineers around me. My goal was to keep the environment healthy and ready for a constant change. And finally, the last B, probably the most important one, and it's people. Learning about people is essential for establishing connections and knowing at least some players before you start playing the game. People will tell you stories and things that cannot be found in any documentation or defined in process descriptions. I really enjoy learning more about people and their point of view. At the beginning, it's not about questions that start with what do you think about or do you think we should? Typically, my cornerstone questions are what do you see or how does it feel to be here? It helps me to understand different perspectives and add them to the bigger picture. That's how I form at least a partial truth about the environment I'm in. Another lesson, and it was about practicing patience. When you're out there in the water, you have two limited resources, energy and time. During your surfing session, you need to manage your energy well so when the time is right, you can get those power paddles in and gain speed before catching the wave. Being too exhausted puts you in danger as well if things go wrong. Every time you fail catching a wave, it requires energy to paddle back to the right spot and try again. Can you think of a person in your organization who seems to be doing everything and just blasting energy to multiple directions without necessarily making progress? I've been one of these people in earlier stages of my career, and I still am sometimes. In surfing and business, patience is about nailing the timing and giving your full energy. Whenever you have a great idea or initiative in mind, do a check-in. Is it a good timing for that, or can I find a better timing and give my full attention then? So here's a simple decision-making tree I use for choosing initiatives and time to work on them. The first question I ask myself, is it a right thing to do? If I'm not sure, I often run some quick and cheap experiments before committing to the initiative fully. Then, depending on the results, I park the idea and don't do it, or I move it on to the next section, which is, is it a good time to do it? I know, you might say that there is no perfect time to do things, and sometimes you still need to do it. I get it. But here, I'm inviting you to check if there are any benefits you can get from being strategic about the timing. We don't live in an ideal world or a stable one, and you might move forward with your initiative being in the orange bubble that you can see at the bottom of the slide, and, and it's completely fine. Lastly, let's talk about energy. 
the more ambitious your initiative, the more energy you'll need. It might be a right thing to do, a great timing, but the energy can make or break the success. Make sure that your batteries are well charged or at least you have enough to move things forward. As any other model in the world, this won't solve all your problems. But this might be a five minute exercise that could build more clarity in a particular situation. It's way more fun to go through things together and experience it with someone. This is me and my friend Bitotas. During a surfing session, we can have a chat about life, cheer for each other after catching a good wave, or just keep an eye on each other. Throughout our lives, we always face challenges, problems, and tackle various quests. In personal life, we have family and friends who have our backs and help us to bounce back when we're down. But in professional life, sometimes we struggle alone and then bring the work problems home. What really worked well for me and contributed to my mental health and more peaceful personal life was having a buddy at work. A buddy is someone who you enjoy spending time with and can explore almost any topic together. I was lucky to have buddies throughout my whole career who turned into true friends. Here's a short story. This is my good friend, Sandy. Photo on the left is from the coffee catch-up we had when we barely knew each other on a personal level, but she invited me to join a company called Nomad 8 and work together. Photo, photo on the right, a year later, it's us again after high-intensity CrossFit class. Me and Sandy can talk about anything, from agility in organizations to how much protein and fat there is in different types of meat. While everyone can come up with their list of things that their buddy should have, here's a short list of mine. First of all, you don't need a break from them. You always spend quality time together, regardless if it's talking, doing something, or just being around. One side story here, not related to Sandy, but to my experience in Barcelona. I sometimes feel sad for people who cannot let the work go and it always dominates their dinner or night out conversations. I had a close circle of coworkers when I was working in Barcelona and we had a rule, which was no conversations about work after 7 p.m. Every, anyone who mentioned a work-related topic had to shout out drinks or food to others. While there were times when we got free drinks from each other in most of the times, we still had a loads of things to talk about. And that's when I knew then that these people are the tribe I want to be a part of. Another item on the list. Over the last four years, while living in Spain and New Zealand, I've met many different people with various backgrounds, stories, and lifestyles. Every now and then, I hear something that strikes me, something that a person learned about life that is extremely relevant to me. Sandy taught me to not take myself too seriously, relax and be myself. While it sounds quite general, there were times when this advice really helped me a lot. Trust is important. The simplest way for me to check my trust level towards a person is thinking if I trust them enough to leave my dog with, it might sound funny, but again, for me, it makes total sense. Personally, I love laughing from life, situations, or for myself. And there is nothing much more to add here. Finding someone you can have a good laugh just helps go through life with more positive attitude. I really hope that all of you already have a buddy or two in your professional environment. If not, I really, really wish you to find one. The fourth lesson for today is understanding your level. And this one might be a tough one to swallow. Quite often, great surfing spots get busy. You get a lot of surfers coming to enjoy great conditions and catch waves. Typically, the better the spot, the more crowded it is. And the busier the spot, the more skill you need to be able to navigate and make sure you don't hurt anyone or get hurt. To even show up in a place like this, you need two main things, skill and confidence. If you don't have these, you should probably go closer to the shore where the waves are not that amazing, but still fun to ride. At the beginning of my surfing journey, there were a few times when I completely ignored this lesson. I went to crowded places and mingled amongst experienced surfers. My lack of skill ruined multiple great waves for others around me. And on top of that, I damaged someone's board once when I just irresponsibly let mine go when avoiding the wave and diving under it. So in a professional environment, it's great to be ambitious, energetic, and challenge yourself.
but make sure that your skill and confidence levels are in sync with reality. Don't be that person who suddenly feels ready to coach leadership or executives after just a few months working with development teams. This particular overestimation of confidence and skill can lead to what I call a role debt. And that's a situation when quite a few people in the organization fall short in competencies required for their role. Look, I, I get it. We all want to grow fast, accelerate our careers, and land a bigger role. My invitation here is to check in with yourself regularly and grow at a sustainable pace where you know that you have solid skills and it's enabling you to make a positive impact in your role. And here's my last point for today. There were times when I just went to the beach without a surfboard and with no intention to get into the water. I was enjoying to see things from above or from distance, the beautiful nature, the way how waves move and how surfers catch them. I had the luxury to have breaks from professional life almost every two years. I had the break before moving to Barcelona. Two years later, I had a few months off before traveling to a complete unknown in New Zealand. And now I've just finished another break and started a new chapter in my home country, Lithuania. I highly recommend to take a break and reflect before you accept a new opportunity or have a significant career change. Taking some time off helps you to declutter your mind, clean up unhealthy thoughts, and adjust habits or beliefs so you can show up with a fresh perspective. And now, go out there, have fun catching waves in your organizations, teams, or the ocean. Uh, thank you so much, Paulus, for taking the time to visit the show and doing this talk. I, I was mes mesmerized with your examples of surfing and your, your personal stories, and yeah, thank you. It was great sharing uh, the story with the audience and with you, Jimmy. I hope they appreciate it as much as I do. I have a few questions for you. Uh, the near-death experience in surfing sounded <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> do you have any examples of near-death experiences in your in your line of work as an agile coach? Yeah, well, luckily not, but definitely I went through a lot of fire drills. And, 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 and luckily they were all just, you know, fake when people have to evacuate and then you suddenly have 300 people, you know, running out of office and, you know, lining up outside. So uh, apart from that, luckily, no, no near death experiences so far. All right. <laughs> I'm happy for you. Maybe we'll have them in the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You also mentioned something um, that got me interested. One of the three P's, learn from the past. A lot of the time we tend to focus on Look, at, look into the future, look at the op opportunities, what can you do, and so forth. Okay, so how can it look like when you work with a team to learn from the past? Yeah, so when I was working with a team some time ago and, you know, just joined as an agile coach, um, I realized that the, the, the mood of the team is, is quite low and the team feels quite down. So I was trying to learn, like, what happened there. And I just learned that, you know, during the last six months, they were under a huge pressure they had quite a few toxic people around them. So I knew that the team is, is hurt at the moment and they have some scars. So that was the context that I had to acknowledge. And if I completely ignored it, I would have chosen like the wrong tactics and wrong strategies. So this content from the past and this context was really useful for me to um, come up with, you know, my, my game plan. Yeah, okay, good example. Thanks. <laughs> also, another thing, good advice. Um, uh, try to do the right thing at the right time and you have the energy to do it um, have you coached or helped anyone or yourself to not do the right thing at the at the wrong time yeah yeah i typically use it for myself for you know stopping myself from doing something you know something right at the wrong time so i can even build on the on the previous example right so when i start working with this team that i felt is, is quite hurt one of the opportunities that I saw was improving some discovery and delivery practices, which was a, a right thing to do. But at the same time, I was a complete outsider from their perspective. You know, this new guy trying to, you know, tell us what to do things. So while it was the right thing, it was the wrong time. And actually, the first thing was for me to build a connection with people, right? So it was a, it was a right thing to do, and it was a good time. So... That's why I, advanced, why I advanced with this particular tactic to connect with people first. Yeah, and I guess you have to practice the skill of patience as well. Yeah, that's, that's true. 
<laughs> yeah, the connection doesn't happen overnight. No. And the final one, I guess, is for me. Uh, if you can coach me or help me think about this, I, I I I tend to put myself into situations where I aim a little bit above my level. So you said, understand your level, otherwise you can cause harm. So I'm worried. When I put myself into situations where I'm saying yes to teaching or talking about something I'm not an expert in, or um, coaching a new set of people I've not that maybe experience with, uh, I do that to learn out of egoistic reasons. But maybe I'm, I'm now I'm worried that I'm causing harm to others. <laughs> yeah. Boss. So yeah. So it's always about the balance, right? So stepping out of your comfort zone or your skill zone a bit, you know, one level above is is okay every now and then. But I guess the the biggest problems happen when people jump way too far above their level, right? So I would say the the chances of creating harm increase the further you go, right? So mm -hmm. if you step just a little bit outside, you know, you might get lucky, things go well, you might cause a little bit of harm and then have a significant learning, which is still like a, a, a pretty good situation. But typically, the further you go outside of your range, the, the higher the chances to cause the damage for others. So yeah, it's, it's important just to have the awareness about this thing. Thank you, Paulus. And uh, thank you for visiting the show. And thank you for your time and contributing. I love this. Thanks for having me, Jimmy. It was a pleasure. Take care. Bye bye. All the best for everyone. Which advice appealed to you? And what advice would you give to others? Please share and discuss in the comments below. If you enjoyed these videos and want to support my work of creating free educational and hopefully entertaining videos here on YouTube, please consider becoming a Patreon. And to my current Patreons, you are the best and your support means everything to me. This talk is a nice continuation of Jason Yip's video, Strategies for Change Agents. Check it out here. And until next time, explore, have fun and be safe.